This video reviews Section D of the 2022 Election Administration and Voting Survey, or EVES. This section seeks to understand in-person polling operations in the 2022 general election. You can find similar presentations for the other five sections of the survey on the EVES portal and the Election Assistance Commission website. As you watch this video, you might want to follow along with the PDF version of the survey, which can be found on the downloads page of the EVES portal. Section D of EVES asks about in-person polling operations in the 2022 general election. You'll report a few types of data. First, how many precincts did your jurisdiction use? Second, how many polling places did your jurisdiction use and what type of polling place locations were in use? Finally, how many poll workers did your jurisdiction use for this election and what were the characteristics of those poll workers? As you answer these questions, keep in mind that all people who cast a ballot in person before election day should be recorded in this section. Examples of this include in-person absentee voting, advance voting, completing mail ballots over the counter, one-stop voting, or other terminology your state may use. Your state or jurisdiction may have data on in-person early voting to report, even if you do not call it early voting. Please reach out to the EVES project team for assistance if you are not sure whether you should be reporting data in the questions in Section D that pertain to early voting. In addition, when you are completing Section D, please keep in mind that people who cast a provisional ballot at their polling place will be reported in Section E. As you complete Section D for 2022, please be aware that one of the questions from 2020 has been removed this year. This removed question asked about the total number of in-person voters. Since this data is already reported in question F1, in addition, two new questions have been added. The first is on the total number of polling places, and the second is on the number of poll workers who served for the first time in the 2022 general election. Because of these questionnaire changes, some of the question numbering has been changed this year. The first set of questions in this section of the survey is about precincts and polling places. Eves defines a precinct as the geographic area to which voters are assigned according to their residential address. Some jurisdictions use the term ward or voting district instead of precinct. In D1A, record the number of precincts your jurisdiction had for the 2022 general election. Next, in question D2A, you will report the total number of physical polling locations your jurisdiction operated for the 2022 general election. In calculating this number, there are a few things you should keep in mind. First, each polling place should be counted only once. For instance, if a polling place was open during both early voting and on election day, it should be counted once in D2A. Second, any location where voters could cast ballots in person, either on election day or before election day, should be included in your response to this question. This includes locations where voters could vote using in-person absentee voting processes, if applicable in your jurisdiction. In D3 and D4, you'll record the number of physical polling places used for each election period. While your answer in D2A counted each polling place only once, a polling place that was used during both early voting and on election day should be counted in both these questions. In D3A, you will record the total number of polling places used during election day voting. And in D4A, you will record the total number of polling places used during early voting. 
Then you will further break down each of these totals by where the polling place was located. Polling places that were located at sites other than election offices, such as libraries, schools, and mobile voting locations will be reported in D3B and D4B. And polling places that were located at election offices will be reported in D3C and D4C. For both questions, the sum of the B and C sub-items should match what you report in the A sub-item. However, because some locations may be included in both D3 and D4 if they were used for both early voting and election day voting, the sum of D3A and D4A may not equal to what you reported in D2A. In questions D2 through D4, you can use the response data not available if you do not track the data necessary to respond to a question. You should still report as much data as you can. For instance, if you track the total number of early voting polling locations, but do not track whether or not these polling locations were at election offices, then report a total in D4A and report data not available in D4B and D4C. Lastly, you can report does not apply in these questions if your jurisdiction does not use in-person polling locations, either during early voting or on election day. The final set of questions in Section D is about poll workers who assisted with the 2022 general election. Your state or jurisdiction may use another title, such as election judge, booth worker, warden, or commissioner. However, the definition of a poll worker for EVES is a person who assists at a polling place with activities like verifying voters' identities, handing out ballots, setting up voting machines, and assisting voters. When counting the number of poll workers, you shouldn't include election observers or staff members from your election office unless they assisted voters at an early voting or election day voting site. Questions D5 and D6 ask you to record the number of poll workers used for election day and early voting. If a poll worker served in both capacities, they should be counted once in D5 and once in D6. However, if a poll worker served multiple shifts during early voting, they should only be counted once in D6. In answering these questions, please remember that any in-person voting before Election Day is considered early voting for EVES and any poll workers who assisted with this voting should be reported in D6. Next, question D7 asks about the age of your jurisdiction's poll workers. In D7A, you will report the total number of poll workers who assisted with the 2022 general election. Please note that the numbers you recorded in D5 and D6 may not sum to what you report in D7A because some poll workers could have been counted in both D5 and D6. After reporting the total number of poll workers, you will provide the number of poll workers who fell into each of the listed age categories in D7B through D7G. Some jurisdictions have that information from poll workers' applications or from payroll records. However, if your jurisdiction doesn't collect that data, you can report data not available for D7B through D7G while still providing the total number of poll workers in D7A. In this question, you should only report does not apply if your jurisdiction did not use any poll workers to support in-person voting for the 2022 general election. The last questions in this section ask for further data on poll workers. 
Question D8 asks how easy or difficult it was for your jurisdiction to recruit a sufficient number of poll workers for the 2022 general election. The possible responses are very difficult, somewhat difficult, neither difficult nor easy, somewhat easy, very easy, and not enough information to answer. In addition to selecting one of these responses, use the D8 comments to provide more information about your experience in recruiting poll workers for this election. While this comment was optional in previous surveys, it is required for 2022. Finally, report the total number of poll workers who served as poll workers for the first time in the 2022 general election in question D9A. If your state or jurisdiction does not track this data, respond data not available. The response of does not apply should only be used if no poll workers assisted with in-person voting in your jurisdiction for this election. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. We encourage you to carefully read through each section before answering any of the questions to ensure you're accurately reporting your data. A PDF of all EVE's questions is on the downloads page of the EVE's portal. We also encourage you to use the comment boxes for each question to provide us with additional information and context. This will help us analyze and report your data accurately. If you need additional assistance, please don't hesitate to contact us at eves at forsmarshgroup.com. All emails sent to the address will be answered within one business day. Thank you, and we appreciate your time and your contributions to the 2022 EVES.